The next skill that we're going to do today is range of motion shoulder. So those of you who have your book, turn to page 53. So this is range of motion shoulder. As always, we start with the care plan. Doesn't matter what else is going on in our life, we start with the care plan. So the care plan says, provide the following range of motion exercises to the resident's left shoulder. Flexion extension and abduction adduction. Provide three repetitions of each exercise and the resident is not able to help with the exercises. So let's go down to the bottom of the screen just to see what our test information is. The test says that somebody with your level of experience should be able to complete this in four minutes. This will be done on a live person and that person will be laying in bed and documentation is not required. So here you'll see all the step-by-step -step instructions. So you can actually, if you're gonna practice this at home, you can actually take your book, open it up to this page, and just do everything listed here. This walks you through step-by-step -step exactly how to do this particular skill. Um, and then if you wanna make sure that you got it all, you know, this, uh, this gray box here has some questions to make sure that you understand the skill itself. But if we go back up here, I want to talk about the care plan because there's a whole lot of big scary words here. And um, I don't like students to, to read this and freak out and most of them do. I don't know what any of that means. So let me break it down for you um, step by step. So the first thing that I want to focus on is in the title. It says passive range of motion. So now everything that I'm going to be talking to you about, this whole lecture I'm about to give you, will start in your skills book on page 51. So you don't even have to take notes, I've done that for you. So if you turn in your skills book to page 51, it's gonna go over the difference between active and passive. So this care plan tells us to perform passive range of motion. There's two different types of range of motion, active, and passive. Now, active range of motion is if I ask you right now, can you extend your left arm above your head like you're asking a question? And if you get your arm up, just like this, I might say, okay, straighten it out, don't get that elbow bent, straighten it out, reach for the sky. Okay, now bring it all the way back down. So let's do that again. Go all the way up and all the way back down. Okay, so that is active range of motion. I'm telling you what to do, I'm critiquing you, I'm giving you input and making sure that you're doing it right. So I'm guiding you, but you're actually doing the work. Passive range of motion is something different and this care plan specifically says passive range of motion. So that means that we are gonna do the work. Patient is not lifting their arm, we're going to do that. But it's important that we tell the patient what we're about to do because you don't just want to go up and grab somebody's arm and start moving it around because they don't know what you're about to do. So if you explain to them, I'm going to lift your arm above your head like you're asking a question, the patient is familiar with that action. They know that that doesn't hurt. So they get, you get more compliance. They get more on board with what you're about to do because it's not an unknown. They, they understand the action. So with this skill, you really do have to explain what you're doing before you start moving the patient. So this is passive range of motion. Remember, there's two different types, active and passive. But in order to truly understand what range of motion is, we kind of have to discuss what it isn't. Range of motion is not exercises to make patients better. And that's where a lot of CNAs go wrong. Because you think, okay, the patient's in a hospital or a rehab or a nursing home or an assisted living or even home care, and I'm here to help take care of them. That must mean that the exercises are supposed to make them better. And that is not true at all. Okay, you need to understand that. We have a whole department geared toward helping people do exercises that make them better. And that department is called physical therapy. There's also occupational therapy and speech therapy as well. But the therapy department is geared toward doing exercises to regain function, okay, or restore function. 
those people, those physical therapists have to have a doctorate degree. Guys, that's eight to 10 years of education to do exercises on somebody to restore function. That's how long they have to go to school to learn how to do that. Now, a physical therapy assistant, that's a two-year degree. You have to go to school for two years to learn how to help a physical therapist do exercises to make people better. As CNAs, we do not do exercises to regain function. We do exercises to retain function. That's totally different. We are trying to keep the patient at their present level of ability. So where they are now, we're just trying to keep them from going down from there. So we are only doing things that the patient can actually do, right? We're not forcing pain. If, if the arm only goes up to here, we don't go past there, okay? We're not trying to improve anything. We are only exercising the patient's extremities to the le present level of ability. We're trying to keep them from degrading while they're, they're going through other treatments. So let me give you a story to help illustrate why this might be important. We'll talk about Frank. Frank is an elderly gentleman. He's in his early 70s. He's very active. And he and his brother Ralph play tennis every Tuesday and they're very competitive. So on this particular Tuesday, Ralph and Frank are out at the tennis courts and they're just really wailing on those balls because they both want to win. And on this particular day, Frank hits a volley over to his brother. And when he does, I mean, he really wails on that ball and he feels something in his right shoulder give way. So off to the ER they go. Now, the ER doc does some tests and says, good news, bad news, right? The bad news is you tore your right rotator cuff and you're probably right-handed. And Frank says, yeah, I'm right-handed. Right he says, that is bad news. But the good news is the surgeon has an opening tomorrow and can get you fixed right up. Frank says, sign me up. I can't go home like this. So he has surgery. And two days later in the hospital, the discharge planner comes in. And she says, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. I need this bed for other people. We got to discharge you. But you're going to need some help, right? That's your right arm. You can't cook. You can't dress. You can't bathe. You can't drive. You need help. Is there anybody at home that can help you with those things? And he says, no, I'm alone. My wife passed away a couple years ago. My brother still works. I, I'm pretty much on my own. And she says, what about a rehab? Now, at the rehab, there's physical therapy right there on site. You can just walk down the hallway and get your physical therapy. And there's pretty girls that can help you button your button, zip your zipper, cut your meat, open your milk. And he says, sign me up. I'll go. So he goes to the rehab. Now, remember... When the patient comes in, the RN has to do a head-to-toe assessment, and that's my job. So I go in, I do a head-to-toe assessment on Frank, I figure out all of his real problems and all of his potential problems while he's here, and I write up a care plan for everybody to follow. So you, as a CNA, come in and you help him with bathing and dressing and grooming, and you help him, you know, cut his meat and open his milk, so small actions with eating, but he's still able to feed himself. So at the end of six weeks, physical therapy has worked on that right shoulder, and you have done pretty much everything else for him. So how much work is that left shoulder done? in this whole six weeks that he's been here. That's right, none. Now, what do you think is going to happen to that left arm if it's not moving in six weeks? Yeah, it's going to decrease in size, decrease in mu mu muscle mass, and that's actually called atrophy. There's a word for that, where it decreases in muscle mass. But you can actually lose mobility in the shoulder, and it's called a frozen shoulder from lack of use. So that's bad. Yeah, it's going to get weaker. It's, it's not going to work as well. You're going to lose range of motion. So the good news is at the end of six weeks, we fixed this right arm. We did what we were supposed to do, but we broke his left. So do we really help him? 
No, not really. He's in the same condition he came in in. He, it just opposite arms, right? One shoulder works well, the other one not so much. So when we're helping patients and we have a plan of care, if we don't address the entire patient, not just what they're there for, right? Because everybody's focused on that right shoulder. That's what he had surgery on. That's what physical therapy is going to take care of. That's what the nursing staff is going to look at is the incision on that shoulder, right? Everybody's focused on that right shoulder, but we can't forget that there's a body that that right shoulder is attached to. And that entire body has to be uh, considered when we're making up a care plan. So as the RN, let's rewind back to the very first day when he came in and I did that head to toe assessment. And I had physical therapy, they're gonna work on that right shoulder twice a day for six weeks, they'll get the job done. And I've got you guys helping him open his milk, cut up his meat, button his buttons, zip his zippers, bathing, dressing, grooming, all of that. But I also ask one of you to do range of motion exercises on the left shoulder. Once a shift, we're gonna do flexion extension and abduction adduction three times each to maintain the current level of ability. Now when we discharge him in six weeks, we did a good job. Right shoulder is up and running and left shoulder did not degrade in that time period. So do you guys understand a little bit more about why range of motion is done in healthcare now? It's not to make patients better. We have a whole department for that. That's not us. Range of motion for CNAs is done to maintain a current level of ability to prevent degradation. So, and that, that's kind of one of the, the biggest um, realizations for CNAs during this course is, oh, okay, so we're not, you know, they, they go into range of motion thinking it's something completely different than what it actually is. So if you keep that in mind. Now, there's three different types of exercises that we can be asked to do. And this is going to be on page 52 of your book. So those of you that are going along in your book, this is what I'm talking about now. There's three different exercises that CNAs can do. There's flexion extension, and that's what I just had you do. If you remember, I said extend your left arm above your head like you're asking a question. So these are pairs of exercises. Extending means to straighten a body part. So to extend your arm above your head is to straighten the body part up above your head. Now flexion is the opposite of that. So flexion is to bring it back down because your shoulder is innate normally bent or flexed position. Some of our body, some of our joints are naturally in an extended position and some are naturally in a flexed position. So like your legs are naturally in an extended position, unless you're curled up on the couch or laying down in bed and then you probably have your knee and your hip bent um, curled up. So different body joints have a different normal, what we call baseline of flexion or extension. So your elbow is usually in the extended position, straightened out. Your wrist is usually in the extended position, but you can bend them both, flexed. Okay, so a flexion and an extension are two halves of the same whole. Okay. One moves a body part one way, the other brings it back to start. Now, when you're doing range of motion exercises, you always have to go all the way back to start. Otherwise, it's not a full range of motion. So if I have you extending the arm above the head and I want three repetitions, this doesn't count. Okay, because that's not bringing it all the way back to start. So when you're doing range of motion, you have to go all the way to the fullest point available. Now that's going to differ patient to patient. Some people have uh, joint issues or muscle issues and you may not get, be able to get a full extension. We are going to go to the point of pain or resistance. So if we get a patient that we're going to do flexion extension on and we get to hear and the patient says, ow, 
or they wince or they grimace or they show us in some way that beyond this hurts, we're going to go all the way back to start and the next one will go below the owl. Go all the way back to start, the third one below the owl and all the way back to start. And then we go find a nurse and we say, hey, we got to here and got out. There was pain. And the nurse's job is to figure out what caused the pain, what we can do about it, and how we should modify the exercises moving forward. We don't go past the point of pain or resistance. So flexion, extension, those go together. Flexion is bending of a body part, extension is straightening of a body part. Abduction, adduction also go together. When you abduct a child, you take it away from its family. So when you abduct an extremity, you take it away from its family. So this is a side-to-side -side motion. So you start in a, a just a, a close-to-the-body relationship, come out, that's abducting. Bringing it back in is add, A-D-D-ducting. So those two go together, moving an extremity away from the body, abducting, bringing it toward the body at, at ADD, adducting, okay? So those two go together. And then you have rotation. Rotation is just an around motion. So, you know, around. So there's only one because you always end where you started, okay? So around is a, a full circle, so you end where you start. So flexion, extension, those two go together. Abduction, adduction, those two go together. And then rotation, you always end where you start, so there's only one. So our job is to figure out, based on the care plan, which exercises we have to do, which body part we have to do them on, and how many repetitions we need to perform. So body part is actually pretty important. If the care plan says left shoulder, then that's all you're going to do is the left shoulder. Our job is to follow that care plan exactly. So you want to look at what body parts am I supposed to be exercising? And then you have to figure out how many repetitions do I need to do? So when you're doing range of motion, it's actually like following a recipe. It's super easy. First thing you need is it active or passive. Am I doing it or are they doing it? You have to find out what exercises, what body part, and how many repetitions. As long as you know those five things, you can't really mess this up. Now, when you're going to lift an extremity, we always lift from below with flat palms. Never lift from above. We're not the claw machine at Walmart. We don't like dig in with our fingertips and try to lift up because that can cause bruising, muscle injury, uh, tearing of tissue, all kinds of bad stuff. Arms and legs can get heavy, and if all you've got is fingers digging in to lift that weight, you probably are gonna cause injury. So anytime we lift, we lift at the joints with flat palms. So if I'm gonna lift the arm, I should have a hand under the wrist and under the elbow. If I'm gonna lift the leg, I should be under the knee and under the ankle, but you need to lift from below with flat palms. Okay, always return back to start, and the motion should be very slow, very smooth, and complete all the way to start. All right, so that's how range of motion is done. So let's go back really quickly here and look at that care plan one more time now that I've explained all of that to you. So you can see we're going to do passive range of motion. We're going to work on the resonance left shoulder. We need to do flexion extension and abduction adduction. And we're going to do three repetitions. So those are the five things that we need to know. Passive, left shoulder, the exercises, and three repetitions. Um, I'm gonna show you the video on this, but pay attention to my opening, how I address the patient, Pay attention to my indirect care. Watch if I do the correct extremity, the correct exercises, and the correct repetitions. And then pay attention to how I end the skill as well. So this is a very quick skill. I think it's a three-minute skill, so it's pretty quick. 
Let me go ahead and turn that on for you.